and welcome to IRI Growth Insights, featuring IRI thought leaders, industry partners, and guests. For more than 40 years, IRI has been known for its invaluable data, but these podcasts delve into the insights the data reveal to fuel market disruption and market growth for those in the CPG, retail, healthcare, and media markets. I'm your host, Joan Driggs, coming to you from IRI's corporate headquarters in Chicago. Hello, and welcome to the final episode in a special series of Growth Insights focused on the Consumer Electronics Show. I'm Ben Arnold, Consumer Technology Industry Analyst for NPD, and I'm joined by my colleague, Joe Derichowski, our Home Improvement Advisor. Hey, Joe. Hey, Ben. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Over the past several days, we've logged about 10 to 12 miles walking the show floor. We've visited with tons of exhibitors. Fortune 500 companies and startups to learn about new and emerging technologies, gadgets, and the needs that they're working to solve. Today, we're going to talk about what this means for the consumer, how these technologies will impact how they live, including how they aid productivity, provide new levels of convenience or entertainment, and even how they help us improve our health and wellness. In previous episodes of our CES podcast series, which you can find at iriworldwide.com or wherever you download podcasts, we spoke about the intersectionality of technology and consumer trends. We've also provided some highlights from the CES presentation I delivered with Paul Gagnon, Seven Ways the Consumer Electronics Consumer Has Changed. And Paul and Mike Crosby, our retail IT and B2B technology industry analysts, shared their highlights from CES. All right, Joe, it's our turn. Are you ready? What were your first impressions of the show? Well, first, it was much busier than last year and got very much similar to where it was pre-pandemic. And I think the thing that kind of stuck out to me is I was looking for how far uh, have the major appliance companies really advanced. They're sitting on a gold mine of really changing the way we answer the one of the big pain points that we have every night is what's for dinner. And part of one of the things that has happened here and there, not only to the technology that they showed amongst their appliances that were there, but really the advancement of this thing called the Home Connectivity Alliance, which started a year ago, but it allows you as a consumer, you might have a a GE refrigerator and a LG floor care and a Samsung uh, 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 heat, uh, air purifier in those areas. And they have to be able to work together. You want to be, it's like your TV. You don't want to have 10 remote controls. You don't want to have to be opening 10 apps just to make things work. And so these guys have really focused in on building a partnership with a whole bunch of other companies to just make it easier for us as consumers to be able to utilize these smart appliances and have them work together. And I think it's critical because then that last little step of really solving what's for dinner is the ability of all these things being able to speak to each other. So I was kind of pleased to see some of the advancements uh, and impressed impressed also by what's going on with the Home Connectivity Alliance. There was also a lot in the health and wellness space that I saw playing out. Uh, one of the products that kind of caught my eye was there is a, it's by Withings, it's it's called, uh, it tracks, uses urine to track and guide you on recommendations of dietary needs that you may have and other areas that they play. And there are a bunch of other fancy ways, people using bath mats to read your body composition and provide just suggestions on what's happening, health and wellness. So there really was a lot of advancement in health and wellness as well across the board, even, even textiles. They had pillows that would adjust to make it easier so you sleep longer as, and less snoring if you wanted to do it. There's a lot of really unique benefits uh, when we think about solving some of the consumer needs that we're playing out here across the home industry. Joe, it's uh, it's so great to hear you talk about the connectivity standards. And uh, the, the one I'm thinking of is called Matter, which helps uh, you know products on different technology platforms all connect to each other and you know, take some of that friction out of buying products and being worried that you know they may not be compatible with what you have at home. And that's a, a huge deal in the smart home space. But you talked a, a little bit about 
this health and wellness trend and how it, you know, again, feeds into the larger sort of consumer movement. And what I saw at the show was a very big emphasis on that. I mean, you talked about the, the floor mat and the, and the fabrics. Um, one that, that really struck me was the L'Oreal Hapta, which uh, is really kind of a, an accessibility device uh, for folks that are you know, putting on lipstick. This is a lipstick applicator uh, who may have uh, unsteady hands, may have trouble you know, applying uh, makeup. Uh, that was a, a really big hit at the show. And they partnered with a company called Verily, which we know makes these smart uh, utensils, again, for folks that, you know, may not be able to use a standard utensil. But it's, uh, you know, products like that that really caught my eye this year. I guess the, the theme is accessibility. Uh, but, you know, I really look at it as technology for, for everyone, right? And, and uh, using technology to help people live uh, more independent lives. I'll, I'll throw another one at you, Joe. Uh, and this is in the, in the gaming space, but uh, Sony made a, a big impact with uh, the what they're calling Project Leonardo, which is a gaming controller. So for people who play video games, but it's a adaptive, modular, customizable controller that, uh, you know, again, if somebody has uh, some you know, issues with their hands and being it wants to play games, but maybe a standard controller does not work for them. Uh, you know, they can use this product, customize it to how they want, and they're off and playing games. And, uh, you know, I guess when and I'm looking for all of these connected home trends at the show and, uh, you know, aside from matter, I think everything was in the right place. But some of these, again, tech for a better life types of accessibility products, I thought were were super interesting. Yeah, you can see a lot of times in the personal care space, you would see this play out a, quite a bit in, in oral care, you know, whether it's ways to help track how your kids are brushing their teeth, making it so it's gamification for them while they're brushing their teeth. I thought it was a, one interest. They had one toothbrush that looked like a mouth guard for football, but basically they use vibration. So it cleans it in 10 seconds. So different ways but they're trying to make it be a little bit of an experience as well as while you're trying to perform a function, it's adding a little bit of an experience to be with it, uh, a little bit of fun to play along with it. And I, and I have to mention one more uh, kind of a neat thing that I, that I read about. I didn't get a chance to see it, but it was all over the, the news. Uh, the Spoon Tech electric spoon, uh, which actually uses uh, an electric current to change the taste of food that's in the spoon, uh, I thought was really interesting. And the use case around that was um, if you want to use less sugar or less salt in your cooking, uh, but don't want to sacrifice and taste, uh, the Spoon Tech uh, electric spoon can um, can facilitate that. So you know we always see new interesting things at CES. That was one of the, the, the things that really caught my eye. Um, I just want to uh, bring up something else. We talk a lot about appliances and uh, you know, consumers' interest in connected appliances. Do you see anything on, on that front that, that interests you this year? Well, there still is such a big effort happening on, on a case where people are getting guided recipes and guided cooking and leveraging you know, like what you're seeing in the smart appliances, the ability to identify what's in the refrigerator, what's in the pantry, what's about to go bad and providing suggested recipes for those items or or based on dietary needs. But it's also hitting some of the smaller appliances. Uh, there are several appliances that are kind of a... Uh, what I would say a thermal mix knockoff. And for those who haven't heard of that, think of a product that's in about 40% of households in Europe, that's like 1500 bucks. It basically does everything. It's a guided cooking. Well, there are several examples of those that are making a little bit more economical for consumers, but you started seeing this guided cooking, the ability to execute on a recipe that is done on a very specific uh, perspective for each a consumer, uh, depending on what you're making. So I thought we saw a little bit of those play out there throughout the, the uh, show as we saw it. Yeah, you know, when when I'm thinking about what I noticed on the appliance and small appliance front, I saw the GE Smart Mixer, which I thought was a, a pretty interesting product. 
um, has a built-in scale. So, you know, how much ingredients to add to the, the mixer. It's also voice controlled. And, you know, sometimes we, we joke a little bit about everything becoming voice controlled. And I think a couple of years ago, there was a, a shower head that could be controlled via the Google Assistant. Um, yep. But again, think about making cooking, making technology accessible to all. And the benefits of voice control or maybe, you know, uh, hands-free cooking in some ways, really opening up cooking for, for a lot of consumers. I thought that was very cool. Um, and one then the, the other, yeah, go ahead. One of the products that caught my eye a lot is this product called sous vide. And it's, it's S-U-V-I-E. It's not sous vide. It's very different. <laughs> but it too is, it's a very much of a smart way to make cooking. I think it probably is the future. It uses cold cooking as a technique to really help you as a consumer get whatever you're making done at the exact same time, both the main dish and the side dish um, and other areas so that it, it allows you to really plan your day, make it most efficient, but also cook it in a way that gets done very, very efficiently and leveraging a lot of times the uh, frozen foods, the ability to put something in there and you could cook it later that day or the next day, whatever the case, but it keeps it ready. You just say, hey, I need it to be done at this time and it's done at that time. I think it really is setting the future of where a lot of a lot of the Monday to Friday meals will be solved. Well, you and I have talked a little bit about in the past about smart ovens and I think it was the sun oven that you, no, the June oven that you uh, put a dish in and the artificial intelligence is able to identify what's in the oven and knows how hot to cook it and, and how long. Do you see any any trends or any innovations along those lines this year? Well, like I said, the sous vide is one. You do see it uh, in some of the, we even see it in some of the Bartesian and LG had a beer maker where it kind of leverages some of that. Um, we saw several things as it relates to um ice makers and stuff that people leverage different techniques to be able to adjust into that space. So it's it's covering both entertaining, it's covering the week-to-week -week meals that people have. Bravo was out there showing a similar appliance that you're talking about there. So we kind of saw it for both the main dishes, the side dishes. We saw a little bit for beverage areas and for entertaining spaces as well. Now, I did see the LG Mood Up refrigerator. Uh, and I, you know, we've talked about what can a connected refrigerator do for the household that answers that question about what's for dinner. Uh, this one doesn't exactly answer that question, but it's got LED lights, customizable lights on the outside of the refrigerator uh, so that you can uh, customize the lighting to your mood, which is coming off the refrigerator, which to me is probably the most CES thing I can think of, a uh, refrigerator covered in LED lights. Um, so I, I did wanna, want to mention that. Any, any other highlights that, that you saw this year, Joe? Well, in addition, we see a lot of robotics starting to play out. So it's always been in robotic vacuums and there was a lot of advancement also into robotic mopping and, and cleaning in that area. But in addition to that, you saw the continuing the expansion into lawn care, uh, window cleaning, snow blowers that were out there, the ability so you can handle things robotically that just makes a lot of these jobs a little bit easier. Um, I thought that that was kind of an interesting space. I did see a little bit more effort into the textile space. And we talked about the bath mats and the pillows and some of the smart beds that read and try to keep your body at the same temperature so you get the best sleep possible. So they're using technology different in that space, which also uh, was fascinating just to see some of the advancements there. I also saw some of the massaging appliances entering into new areas like eye massagers and ways to help apply creams and stuff in a more effective manner and a lot of the smart scales that people have. So it, it really has advanced across the board throughout the home industry. The robotics piece is very interesting. And I think as we Think about the future and what role robots play. It's not necessarily rosy from the Jetsons, right? I think it's going to be more about these single purpose window washing. There used to be a, a uh, robot that cleaned the gas grill outside. That was a pretty cool one. 
Uh, I was having breakfast at the convention center last week, and uh, there was a robot going around the food court uh, taking people's recyclables in their trash. So that future may be a little bit closer than we think. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and you raise another good point, or probably a big theme that also was there, not as big as what we saw at IFA, but still undercurrent was sustainability. So you saw things, appliances about recycling foods and helping things, uh, waste, recycling waste products in a little bit easier fashion. And when it came to um, like showers and, and, and a lot of that area of the home, the water management, that there was a lot of really great innovations that allowed people to manage how much water you're using for the right purpose, not only just making an experience, but the ability to make sure that you're being as sustainably friendly as you can be. Uh, and there was a lot of effort into that space as it related to kitchen and bath. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, sustainability is one of those evergreen issues in, in technology and we often talk about it in terms of packaging or sourcing materials in the product, but we're now seeing more products, whether it's you know in regards to water usage or something like a smart thermostat, which actually you know changes my habits. Uh, we're seeing technology products which are really working to help us live more efficiently, uh, and I think that that's a very strong motivator of change in our society. Well, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Be sure to find our other CES podcasts at iriworldwide.com or wherever you download your podcasts. And thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Please become a subscriber and let us know what you want to learn more about. We'll serve it up in a future IRI Growth Insights episode. Look for us wherever you get your podcasts and be sure to review IRI Growth Insights. Also, visit us on the web at iriworldwide.com and connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. 